Hello everybody. I'm going to shoot another clip here on a modification I'm going to do on my joiner. Uh, this is going to include some basic lathe operations as well. So this is the cutter guard that fits in this hole and it pivots like this and the spring pulls it back. This is kind of a, a bearing surface here that needs to be oiled and lubricated. Of course the shaft, you know, put a little light 3-in-1 on that, but it seems to stick from time to time. And I didn't really look in the old manual to see if the parts breakdown showed a washer. So I'm going to make one out of Delrin. A very thin washer that will sit on here and will kind of act like a bearing or at least separate these two surfaces and make it ride a little bit smoother. So I'm going to get this chucked up on the lathe and this should be a fairly quick video and we'll go through some basic stuff again. Well let's get underway with this little project. I'm going to try to put a piece of paper down here and see if that works out so it might be a little bit easier to see the work. Again, this is as close as I can get. Uh, here's what we're shooting for. We're going to basically make a washer that's three quarter on the OD. I'm going to put a 29 64th hole through the middle and it's going to be a 16th inch thick. Plain and simple. Very, very, very easy basic stuff. <coughs> So I've got a piece of Delrin chucked up in here. I'm going to begin by facing it off. So I'm going to bring the cutter up in, make sure that I've got clearance, and I do. And when I say clearance, here's the cutting edge, here's the work. I've got clearance right here so when we come off we're not doing any scraping or anything. So I'm going to bring it in. Hopefully you can see some of this. Here's my compound. Hopefully you can see the dial. I'm just going to come in and touch it and then back the compound off just a little bit and lock my carriage down. Double check and make sure I've already tightened this up. You only want as much hanging off as you need to do the work. I know that this is going to be my cutoff tool and I've given myself some clearance beyond that. So that's going to work out for that particular process. So now we're going to face it off. So I'm just going to come in here and touch off, go to the center, and then turn around and wheel out do it one more time going in just shy of center giving myself a little cut going in to take it all and then I'm turning and coming back out and there we go face that off So now we're ready to turn this surface down and I'm going to do this surface first. I'm going to change to a different tool here. I'm going to do this before I drill the hole in there just to do it. No particular reason other than I've got a lot of meat there right now. Okay, just getting my tool set. Same deal. I'm going to come in, touch off, and move out. You know, you may not have seen the other video, so I'll, I'm going to be covering things a little bit over and over. So I'm going to turn it on. Coming up to where I touch off. Alright, I'm going to cover this process again. Uh, most people would set zero on their dial right now. I'm not going to do that because this is not a concentric surface yet. We need to get it straightened out. So I'm going to turn my graduated collar before zero. Just a couple of thousandths and lock it in. I don't think you can see this. So I've turned it before the zero mark a couple of thousandths and now I'm going to move it to zero. 
and that's in essence going to set a true zero after we take this little pass right here. I'm going to go ahead and power feed this. So here we go. Now I'm under power feed. And now I'm cutting. And I'll just shut it off right there. Since I know we're just going to be keeping a 16th inch off the end, I just went a little bit past it. Now here is a recap of another trick. Uh, make sure your dial calipers are zeroed. Clean off the jaws. I'm going to move this caliper out to 750 thousandths, which is our OD that we want. Try to hold it to where you might be able to see it. So there's 750 thousandths. Now I'm going to set my zero. Now I'm going to take a measurement right here and it is going to tell me how much I need to remove to get down to three quarters of an inch. And it looks like I need to take off four thousandths. Yeah. So since we've got a true zero and we're just doing that skimming pass to true it up, we're definitely on zero. I'm going to take off four thousandths on my dial. Now I will reiterate again if you hadn't seen this my other video on this. I have direct reading dials. My dials are not graduated zero to a hundred. Which means when I say I'm taking four thousandths off, I'm taking four thousandths off of its total diameter and my reduction of cut is one half that. So if you have standard dials, if I say take 4,000 on the dial, you take two. I hope that makes sense. So now I've got that dialed in, I'm gonna just take a light skim again. check it again with the dial calipers. I call them dial calipers but they're digital calipers. And I need to take a little bit more off. No, no that's it. Just wasn't looking right. Okay, that looks good. So I've basically just reduced and when the digital calipers read zero, you're where you want to be. So the next thing we're going to do is center drill for the hole. And I already have my center drill in here. So I'm just bringing it up just shy of the surface, locking in my tailstock. I'm just going to go in there till I reach just a little ways up on this V. It's not real critical here because we're not going to use the center. I'm just opening up a pilot hole that we can follow. Turn the power feed off so that it's not quite as loud. So just drilling a little pilot hole. Good enough. Now I'll insert my drill, which is a 29 And I don't need to go in there very deep. I only want a sixteenth of an inch for our finished product, but I certainly need to get past the end of the lip right here. So same deal, I'm just going to bring it up just shy of the hole. Ready to go, here we go. So 
there's the hole, quick and easy. Now I'm going to take a file and I'm just going to chamfer off this edge here. Just a light touch. Looks good. Now we're pretty much just to parting off. So the first thing I'm going to do is set my part off tool square to the work and I'm going to do that back here on the side of the chuck just getting it square so now I need to get my sixteenth inch of depth. So if you have room up here, zero your calipers back, and we want 625 thousandths, I'm sorry, 0 0.0625, 65 and a half thousandths. Just all over it. There. <laughs> and then I'll lock my caliper in. You can use the head right here. See how it's offset? You can come in here and hold, and that's the way I'm going to do it. I'm trying to keep my head out of the way. And I'm just bringing my cutter right up to the edge of those. And that's that. You could use the pin on the back side. You could use a depth gauge. There's many, many different options for that. So since I have that 16th in there, I'm going to lock my carriage. And I'm not going to cut all the way through this at once because it would be very difficult to chamfer the other side once this drops off. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do rather than just tell you. So here we go. I'm just going to go in a little ways. I need to slow this down. I'm not going to part this off in back gear since this is such a free machining material. I'm just going to slow it down a little bit. You can see I'm parting it off, just going in a little ways, and then I'm going to back out. Now I'm going to take the opportunity to come in here with a file and chamfer this back edge before we drop that off. Just a little tip there. I'm going to kind of be going back and forth with speed real quick. Speed it up a little bit. I'm going to come in here just like this and catch that edge. A bit more. There. So now I've chamfered the back edge of that. Change my speed again. And now I'll finish parting it off. Now like I said, or when you're parting, that's the hardest difficult thing to do on a lathe. This stuff's real forgiving, but the faster it is turning, the faster you have to feed your tool in. So you really want to part at a fairly slow rate of speed, like in back gear, 
and you don't have to feed quite as fast and you have a little bit more control. So this is really, it's really a tactile feel. If you go too fast, you'll dig in and it might walk up of the tool. If you go too slow, it'll chatter real bad. So you've got to feed at just the right rate. So I'm going to part this off. I'm going to use my pencil as a catcher here. So here we go. And there's our little washer. I just need to clean up this inside edge right here and break this off. And should be good to go. Alright, well there's the finished washer looks just fine. I just took an X-Acto knife and kind of deburred the insides of it. No big deal. Let's uh, let's see if it fits. Hey look at that. Fits right on there. Let's put it on. Hook up my spring. better already and I haven't even lubricated the shaft yet just another little upgrade simple little lathe project uh, Delrin is an absolute pleasure to work with you need sharp tools but the stuff cuts like butter and you can move so fast with it and take huge cuts uh, but you know you gotta play gotta play around with everything thanks for watching guys good luck